Oh, dude, that was it as well. <laughs> Welcome to the latest episode of Honest Reviews. Today, I'm going to be looking at the AG60 frame from Icon. The frames were designed by Justin Thursday, who's made a bit of a name for himself by designing a bunch of 3D printed products, including grind wheels. He has made sole plates, he's made cuff bolts, he's made sidewalls for frames and recently he designed the faction sole plates. He made the original ones which were quite wide and he's made a newer slimmer one called the Stealth. So it's really interesting that companies are giving him a chance to get involved in projects and basically make things on a bigger scale and this is his first project with Icon and it's got quite a few interesting features. So as the name suggests, it's 60 millimeters flat. It has got one-sided axles. I do not know why all aggressive frames don't come with one-sided axles because it just makes life easier only having to use one Allen key. Also, these middle two wheels here can be rockered up or down. So if you have them rockered up, you can ride them flat. If you have them rockered down, you can ride them in banana rocker, which is popular with Wizard skating, it's popular in slalom and quite a few aggressive skaters have that set up as well. I know Joey Lunger uses it. So it's one of these things that's kind of good for swivels and turning easier and just gives you more options in terms of manipulating your skates. In addition to that, it also comes with this nifty little feature where you can put little metal slides into the frame and you can either have them in gold, red, or silver. I decided to go for red because it's a little bit kinky, just like me. And in addition to that, other features about the frame that are quite interesting is it is a blend of the super fluid material and carbon. Now, I've been riding the fluid fives for a little while. I really like them. I think they slide really well on ledges. They slide pretty damn fast on rails. So I've never tried the super fluid material. I don't really know why you would want to go any faster. I feel like it gets to a point where grinding fast just becomes a bit dangerous and unpredictable and asking for trouble. But this not only combines the super fluid material, but also has carbon in it as well, which leads me to believe that this is going to slide insanely well on coping in rails and you would like to think it can stand up to a lot of abuse. This frame also comes with a new Kaiser UFS bolt. Now, I know a lot of people out there are probably going to say it's a UFS bolt, who cares? But this one is quite interesting in that it's got two options for fastening it. So it's got the Allen key on the outside and it's got the hexagonal option on the outside. So you can basically put, what are those called? Spark plugs? plugs, rock plug, whatever that attachment's called. You can put it onto it and it basically means that it's pretty much impossible to strip the frame. So even if you screw up the Allen key bit, you can still get the frame off, which means no drilling, no sawing, no destroying your frame. So I think that's pretty cool. And it also frees up a little bit more space for the wheels on the inside too. Power Slide are one of these brands that are just wildly innovative and are always trying to create new products and it's got, it's, it's very commendable. It doesn't always go well. You've got examples where it's gone horrendously wrong, like the Grycon or the USD Legacy or the Kaiser suspension frame, which was utterly useless. But their dedication to continually making new products, improving on their products, trying to design new stuff, I think it's fantastic. And this is just another example of it. Now, if you take this frame and compare it to the Fluid 5, which I've been riding recently, the size large, you can probably see here on the Icon AG60, is notably longer than on the Fluid 5. But if you flip them over and put them side by side, the H block, as you can see there, is pretty much the same width. So you've got a longer frame here, but the same kind of idea. And I also found it quite interesting that the split between the middle wheels is smaller on the AG60, even though it's a longer frame. If you put the frames side by side, you'll notice that the Icon AG60 is notably taller than the Fluid 5 as well, which I thought was a bit strange because they're both 60 millimeter frames for flat. And what I like about this frame is it offers slightly more wheel protection on the inside because it slopes up the way towards the H block 
which the Fluid 5 doesn't do as much. And I also like that the H block isn't as narrow and it isn't as deep. So as you can see, you've still got a relatively deep H block. It's still gonna offer good lock-in, it's gonna break in pretty quickly, but it's not as deep and narrow. So I know some people in the past complained that the Fluid 5 it felt a bit tight and a bit difficult for getting out of switch-ups because the H block had a narrow groove. Whereas with this one, you don't have that as much. Now, full transparency, PowerSlide actually sent me a set of these for free to review, but if you think I'm gonna take it easy on them, you will be mistaken because I'm going to reward their kindness by trying my best to absolutely destroy them. <laughs> and by the power of editing, we are back. I have fully set them up with 50 millimeter mushroom blade and wheels, which I think are called buddies. This is my third flat setup of this wheel. I absolutely love them. They're really durable. They're really good on the roll, maneuver well, last for a long time. I really like the profile. They slide well. You don't really get hung up and caught on them. So they're, they're like that perfect even ground between being hard enough to last, but being soft enough that you've got good grip. So yeah, absolutely love these wheels. Can't recommend them enough. If you've not tried them, I strongly recommend you do. What I found strange about this is I went for the 58 millimeter because I'm a coward and didn't want to do the 60 millimeter. But you'll notice that with the 58, there's not a lot of free room and there's quite a lot of just empty dead space between the first and second and the third and fourth wheel. Now, I don't know what the idea was behind the design, but it just feels a little bit unnecessary to have all that kind of empty space there because you still can't really access the UFS bolts. I thought that initially might be the idea, but I've tried to get in there and can't. So I don't think that was the motivation behind it. But you do, as you can see, have still quite a lot of wheel protection on the second and third wheels. So I don't really see it being that much of an issue. However, the first issue I have encountered with this frame is not even rolling around on it, it was setting it up. I've had issues in the past with Create Originals being quite stiff and being tough to get into the center wheels. I've had issues with the Kaiser Fluid 5, but over the years when you skate, you figure out hacks for doing this. You figure out ways to like manipulate the frame and get it out to get the wheels and bearings in without damaging the bearings or the washers on the inside of the frame. None of those hacks worked with this. Setting up a Fluid 5 is a pain in the arse. Setting this up is a complete and utter ball ache on a monumental scale. I was in my garage, I think it was for like three hours one night, just testing out every tool that I could. Getting the wheels in either end is fine. You can open that up, that's the weakest part of the frame. You can put it in there and adjust it, no problem. But trying to put the center wheels in first, I tried the old hammer handle hack where you put your hammer handle in and twist it so that it opens it up. That didn't work, that didn't work at all. In fact, it just destroyed one of my hammer handles. I tried the same thing with my chisel handle, which has got a little bit of a harder plastic. It didn't move at all and just chewed up the edge of the chisel handle. And I also tried my plier trick where I basically just put the plier in, open it up, and it forces it open enough to just slot the wheels in. It did nothing. I was in there for three hours and I almost cried with rage. I nearly tore apart my entire garage because I was just getting so pissed off putting these together. The thing that eventually worked was this. I don't even know what this is called, but I found it in my toolbox and basically because the handles are longer, it offered more leverage. Even then, it was a total nightmare getting those center wheels in. Had to open it up and it dropped in, but then once the center wheels are in, they are so jammed in there and it is so tight that you can't make the minor adjustments, the minor movements necessary to get the bolt to line up with the bearings and go through. So I was basically just sitting there every once in a while, prizing this open, tapping it a little bit with a rubber mallet, doing this over and over and just narrowly missing by like a fraction of a millimeter what was necessary to get these in and I was ready to lose my mind. I came back in the house and my partner was like, you've been in there for hours, what have you been doing? I was losing my shit, 
That's what I was doing. I asked Justin Thursday about this and even he admitted that getting the frames into the prototype he has of this was hard as hell. Justin designed this frame. He is a tech, blading tech guru and even he found it hard. Now, I've seen people with the white version of this. They've managed to get the wheels in fine, all four wheels in, but that version is not part made of carbon. This, the carbon just makes this rock solid and doesn't make it bend at all. So basically prizing it open is just really, really difficult. I would recommend if you're getting this frame to get a friend to come over, get them to hold it open with that or another tool and you put the wheels in or vice versa. Basically, it's going to be a team effort because otherwise, like me, you're going to struggle on your own. You can do it if you've got the right tools. If you've got like a desk vise, a tabletop vise that's narrow enough that you can basically hold this open and put the wheels in, great. Not many people have access to that. Or you can get these things called miniature clamps, which are reversible. And again, you can open it up, just leave it there and then put the wheels in. But unless you have something like that, you're just gonna have to go to like B&Q or a DIY store and spend 10 pounds on that, which you shouldn't have to do that. Let's be honest, rollerblades are essentially considered kids' toys. So this is a kid's toy that took a fully grown man with a garage full of tools three hours to assemble. Now, I'm not the brightest guy in the world, but I also like to think that I'm not the dumbest and this was hard as hell. However, once they're assembled, I would argue that they are, they're a thing of beauty. They are looking good. I really like it. I'm not gonna lie, I don't understand this gap here. I don't see why it's necessary. I don't see what it provides. I guess it gives a longer wheelbase, which people might like for maneuvering or stability. That could be the justification for it, but I'm really excited to try these, put it through its paces. If you think this is gonna be a biased review because they were sent to me by PowerSlide, I can strongly assure you that is not gonna be the case. There's a new spot in Glasgow that's got quite rough ledges that slide, but they don't slide that well and they tend to tear apart your frames. That is the first place I'm taking these because A, I want to see how well they slide and B, I want to see how durable they are and how much they can stand up to grinding rough materials. The weather is also a bit disgusting in Scotland right now. It's really changed. So we're probably gonna be spending a lot of time in skate parks. I'm gonna try and get as much street footage as possible. I'm gonna skate these for two or three weeks, try my best to absolutely annihilate them. And yeah, I'll let you know how I get on.
first go! And we're back. I've been riding the Icon AG60 frame for about two or three weeks now. I've had about three or four park sessions on it, a couple of street sessions and a DIY session just because the weather in Scotland has been unbelievably horrific. So getting out in the street hasn't been happening as much. I have really enjoyed these so far, but I have run into a few issues. First off, setting them up, as I mentioned, was a complete nightmare. Spoke to Justin Thursday, he said the same thing, but he did convince me that the second time you set them up, it is a lot easier. And he was correct, but I'll get into that later. So, first session I had on these, I didn't love them. I liked them, but I didn't love them. And that is because before this, I rode the Fluid Fives, which was an instant love affair. As soon as I started skating them, I was like, yep, this frame works for me. No break-in time, locked on brilliant, carved good, felt responsive and fast. Same with the Entente Deridari, just didn't feel like skating flat at all. Just so much protection, really maneuverable, really easy. With these, the length played a huge part in it. As soon as I started skating around, I was just aware that I was dragging my foot sometimes when I was pushing or I was catching the front wheel and was just finding I had to adjust my stride and get used to them. By the end of the session, it wasn't that big a deal, but it made me actually go home and find out how long these were. And I got the large frame and the large frame is significantly longer than any other large frame on the market. And that is because this comes in three sizes and most aggressive frames only come in two. If I'd known the frame lengths before I got a set of these from Powerslide, I'd probably have went for the medium because the medium AG60 is actually comparable to most other brands' large frames. So this large is I think it's like over 15 millimeters longer than most other large frames in the market and even more than like in some models. So it's significantly longer than the large Create Original. The large them skates flat frame, the street frame I think it's called. The only one that comes close to it in length is the Entente Deridari, which is actually just a couple of millimeters shorter, but the wheel distribution is different. So that makes it, that plays a part in how it feels for maneuverability. But by the end of the first session, I didn't even notice. When I put them on the second time, didn't notice at all. So it was just one of those things that it was getting used to it. And then after that, it was fine. Another issue I ran into were the wheels. So you may notice that I'm not riding the mushroom blading wheels anymore. And that is because this profile does not work with this frame. I was getting a lot of slip outs and just riding up a ramp, going to push off and just splatting essentially and it was pretty embarrassing and I spoke to Justin Thursday about this I interviewed him you can get a link below and he said that this type of wheel isn't actually suited to this frame because because it's tapered at the side here and this also has a taper it's kind of like almost bullet profile it just creates this long flat area which means when you push off at a certain angle it just wipes out he recommends either using flat profile wheels or round profile wheels. Now, I was dreading putting new wheels in this because of the absolute horrendous experience I had doing it the first time round. He assured me that it would be much easier this time, and it was. This just felt like setting up a normal frame. They all went in relatively easy, no issues, no shards of bedding or space are going everywhere. And as soon as I put the round profile in, no more wipeouts. He was completely right. It does work a lot better. And with this H block, this H block is really, really good. I thought because it was a little bit shallower than the Fluid 5 that I would struggle with it, but it still has enough of a kind of groove that Again, no break-in time, wasn't slipping out, wasn't losing lock-on. Because of the kind of tapered area that you've got on the H block, I think that helps as well with just getting used to it. And yeah, I've been really, really enjoying these. There, there were some issues that I had with them, but they were self-inflicted. Although I do believe that Power Slide and Icon could advertise better that their large is not the equivalent to every other brand's large. But if you know the measurements of the frame, or at least you check the measurements of the frame, then you won't fall victim to the same issues that I did. That was my own stupidity. With the wheels, again, that's the kind of thing that they could advertise better. They could recommend using certain types of wheels with their frames, but 
with trial and error or my trial and error, you now know the right ones to use. And the only thing that I'm not convinced about with this frame is the superfluid and carbon material. They claim it slides way faster, they claim it lasts way longer. That's the only thing that I would put into question a bit. Now, the Fluid 5 already slides really fast. I don't know that you need to slide faster. In fact, I don't know that you can slide faster, if that makes sense. Like, how fast can you go along a rail or a coping or a ledge? And I didn't notice any significant difference with these. If these do slide faster than the normal Fluid 5, that difference is very, very negligible because I spend a lot, most of my time grinding and yeah, didn't really notice that much. Also, any notion that it would last longer or wouldn't grind away as fast, I would put that into question because as you can see, I've already got quite a significant groove on the backslide. I've been doing a lot of backslides, as you can see, some worked out better than others. And even after a couple of weeks of skating these, I already have quite a notable groove. Now, this could be like symmetrics, where symmetrics wear away quite fast at first, and then once you reach a certain point, it just stops. Now, that could be the same with these. They could wear up to a certain point and then just stop, and you just have this perfectly worn in groove. Only time will tell. I'll do another review in six months, but it's not my favorite flat frame in the market. I do like that it's got a really narrow wall. That's one of my things that I didn't like with the Fluid 5. I feel like they're just too thick. This is nice and thin, but still offering excellent wheel coverage. If you want to try flat frames and you're scared about getting wheel bite, this sorts it. In this frame's defense, I would say it's got a lot of great features. If you're a big footed skater and you want a longer wheelbase or you just want a longer wheelbase, this is a great frame for it. There's not that many aggressive frames on the market that offer a similar wheelbase. The only ones I can think of off the top of my head are the Kaiser Slimline, which is slightly longer than this, and the Wish frame. But again, they don't have the rockered option. So if you want to skate Banana Rocker, or you want to try Banana Rocker and haven't yet, this is a brilliant frame for that. It's also got the cool little insert thing, which gives it that unique selling point. This is not my favorite frame on the market. I still prefer the Entente de Rodari, but I do really enjoy this and I am gonna keep skating it. I wasn't convinced at first, but I have, I've grown to love it. And I think a lot of people are gonna be in the same boat because it doesn't feel like most aggressive frames. It does feel a little bit different to anything else I've tried. But again, that's its kind of selling point. That's what Justin Thursday was after. He wanted to make something that wasn't already available. And I think he's done a great job with that. As for the super fluid with the carbon material, I'm not convinced, but yeah, time will tell. I think getting the white ones or getting these ones, you're still getting a great frame. They're still gonna slide really well because most frames do. I don't feel like, yeah, the kind of pushing the super fluid carbon. Mm. In summary, I think it's a great frame. There's just a couple of things to watch out for. Make sure you get the right length. So if you're like me, you're a size nine UK or you ride a size medium then boot or a size nine UK suede, I would recommend getting the medium and not the large. But even if you went for the large, it's working out fine for me, it might work out fine for you. Just be careful what wheels you use with it. I wouldn't recommend using bullet profile or even using a kind of semi bullet profile like the mushroom blade ones are. They're kind of tapered with a flat top face profile. And um, yeah, make sure you go for round and square. But I would recommend this frame. I think Justin Thursday's done a great job. I'm glad that Icon took a chance on him. I think it's really well designed, works really well. Gonna keep using it and I'll report back. For all you sadists out there, here is some footage of me eating shit and generally just making a tit of myself. Can can it did 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 it